that where what your point was? Uh, no, that wasn't my point. My my point was that uh, biochemical adaptations do not cause the kind of change ne necessary to positive evolution has taken place. And how do you think that these biochemical adaptations occur? What what causes them to occur? Well, the design is is ingenious, uh, you know, and capable of that. Uh, biochemical adaptations is not something the creationists have an issue with. I mean, we see it all the time. Explain to me how that works. Question. Well, well I, I, I'm not a biologist, but but I can under I do understand uh, some of the processes of the immune system, and that doesn't provide evidence of evolution either. But I would ask you a question: um, If if no one says it does, occurs, answer my question. You're not, I, I you're, you're not I, answering my question. I don't know the biochemical action activities that actually take place that cause biochemical adaptations, but I, I am quite aware that biochemical adaptations have no effect on the morphology of life forms because they don't change the genetic <laughs> information, which <laughs> defines the Sorry, I have a question. No, 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 no. Sorry. Please allow him to finish, Johnny, and then come back. Don't, don't talk over each other. Johnny, do you want to respond very to what he's just said before he wants to? Yeah. I, I, Matthew, I'm not going to allow you to ask a question because Aaron wants to address these issues as well. Yes, I will. Oh, after can. Aaron's done it. No, I'm coming back to you, Johnny. After Aaron has had his uh, comment, you can ask whatever questions you like, Matthew. Uh, but anyway, but just one at a time, and let's try and keep it civilized. Johnny, you wanted to come back. Yeah, you just said that the biochemical changes we occur aren't as a result of the genes changing? How does that, how do you get a different protein product? How do you get a different phenotype without having the genes change? No. Uh, I did not say the genes do not change. I said, I'm saying the genes do not change in such a way as to produce new morphologies, new morphological structures, new body plans, therefore they don't provide evidence of evolution. Do you not view um, having different receptors coded and, and a different change in gene expression and brand new genes, brand new receptors, brand new ways that they interact? You don't consider the creation of those um, by natural processes to be a change in morphology or a change in phenotype? Because by definition, they are. The, the modification of an existing structure is not a new structure. Um, actually, yes, it is, because you have the old structure and then you have the new structure which is two different structures. Before you only had one, now you had two. Because you don't believe that new genetic information can be added, is that correct? No, of course not. It's not correct. Okay, well, what if I were to tell you that it's added very simply by genetic duplication, <laughs> gene duplication followed by mutation? How, how do you combat that, then, which is something that's been observed dozens, thousands of times? I mean, gene okay. duplication followed by mutation in the duplicated segment. How, how, what's your rebuttal to that? Because that's how new genetic information is added. Okay, I, would ask your, I would ask you to answer your question with a question. What evidence is there in science that duplication of genes and, uh, uh, acted upon by uh, random genetic mutations, which is acted upon by natural selection, how does that produce information which is intangible and kind of a product of only, only of mind? And secondly, how is it? what is the observed evidence that these uh, genes, which are duplicates, which have been mutated, and acted upon by natural selection, produce the information that defines new morphological structures and organisms. Well, because there is new no morphological well, well, so no evidence of that. Well, well, you've answer. you've yes. asked a question, sorry, Nicholas, you've asked a question, be fair, allow John to answer. First of all, you said that they were intangible changes? No, not really. You've got the changes in both the genes, in the 3D function of the proteins and the receptors that are involved. So there is a definite morphological change that can be analyzed quantified and we can see exactly where the change occurred. Um, uh, coding of new receptors and adaptation and biochemical adaptation, that is all of the creation of a new phenotype and that is new information because after all, before, let's for example take nylonase, which I know is everybody's favorite example. You, you've got a bacteria that cannot digest nylon and use it as food source. Then by a gene duplication and a frame shift mutation, mutation, you now have a bacteria that can. So now you've just got a new phenotype and a new genotype. You've got new information. Before, you've got a gene that cannot um, digest nylon, and now you've got one that can. That is new information. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's a great example. I'm glad you brought that up. There's no morphological change observed in that situation. Now, let me finish before you jump in on me, okay? Uh, there's, no, no, there's no morphological change to that. Uh, in the same way that if a person gets more hair on their body, they haven't changed morphologically. They just got more hair. If they already had hair, or a human being can go into a gym and work out for six months and get more muscle mass. They haven't changed morphologically one bit. They just added more mass to the muscles they already have. 
add new muscles, then you've got evidence of evolutionary change. That's morphological change. But ad adapting existing structures that does not create new structures, there's no evidence in science of that. Now, so, when, it comes to to A's, when it comes to nylonase, uh, what we observe is there's no morphological change there either. This is a biochemical adaptation caused by a, uh, what is likely a programmed, not random, but programmed, translational frame shift mutation which created a protein capable of digesting, bonding with nylon and breaking it down. It is merely a biochemical adaptation. In fact, it is a, an extraordinary example of intelligent design that the creature could pro have a programmed translational frame shift mutation but to respond to a, a, an element in the environment. That doesn't provide evidence in the slightest way that that bacteria has changed structurally into a new kind of bacteria. Furthermore, at the rate which bacteria evolve, uh, uh, I mean, not evolve, but uh, uh, reproduce in the world, and because the sun is the greatest cause of random genetic mutation in living things in the world, and because bacteria live upon the surface of the world primarily, we should see, if evolution were true, we should see new species of bacteria, rather what you would call a species, with new morphological structures arising constantly on this planet. We have zero evidence that any bacteria has ever changed morphologically at all. Except for examining their gene structure and things like that. But first of all, your yeah, example about morphological that. evidence. Yeah, yes, it, it, oh, what are, are you talking about? Please, stop talking over each other. We, we've heard your point, Nathie. I'm going to ask John to respond to it. And without you responding, I'm then going to move on to Aaron. I also have a question to ask him, so please, gentlemen, keep it civil whilst I'm away. John, I'm going to ask Wait, let me finish your question. I told you, you will be given an opportunity to do so. I'm doing it in this order. John is going to respond to you. Then, straight away, I'm going to invite Aaron to come on. And you can ask whatever you like shortly. But please, let's be flexible and let's be in that order. And please, give me two minutes. Thank you. Nephilim, in, in hearing you talk, it almost sounds like you would... The only thing that would constitute a morphological change in bacteria for you is if bacteria suddenly, like, sprouted an arm. You realize that the biochemical changes that happen within a bacteria are also morphological changes. They're, phy they're um, phenotypic changes. But aside from that, your example about going to a bodybuilder, or bodybuilder going to a gym and building up muscles... It's a false analogy, and I think that it sort of, it, it, it undermines, like, the, your lack of subject knowledge about this whole thing. Because if bodybuilder building muscles and that changing, that's not a change, because there's no gene change, right? Whereas with these bacteria, there is a genetic change. So it's a false analogy, and it's like, I mean, discussing this with you is it's like watching the, the Palin debate, where she just throws out the key talking points every 30 seconds in a somewhat incoherent stream. Like, get to me... Yes, you've got these morphological changes. They are documented, and you're, you're provided with an alanase thing, which you suggested was an intelligent frame shift mutation. In other words, all of the, all the mechanisms are there. It could have happened naturally, right? It, the, the mechanisms for frame shift mutations are there. Um, the natural selection was there. All of the evolutionary processes were in place. But you believe that God just loves this bacteria and hates nylon, and he just had to find a way to mutate them and tweak them so that they could could munch on some nylon, and you believe that they were intelligently nylon-digested, created, as opposed to just it being a natural process. Do you think that's the most likely explanation? Can I respond now to that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, what you're trying to do is 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 uh, uh, get around the fact that uh, a new protein, a novel protein, arising from a process which is programmed. And need I remind you that programming and code are products of mind. So the DNA itself and this process itself is clearly a, a, a process of intelligent design. Nature cannot produce such things. Uh, you're attempting to do this because the evidence is too strong. I mean, if you, I would like for you to tell me how the protein which arises in this creature because of the program translational frame shift mutation, uh, it, which uh, uh, digests nylon, is any way a morphological change to the bacteria. How does the, the arise of a novel protein cause direct uh, morphological change to the creature? Well, yeah, not because um, it's just not. I, 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 he, he, he talked for about a minute there. I've got about 30 seconds left, 15, if you don't mind, sir. Thank you. So, uh, I, I would, I would posit that, you know, you're, you're pointing to the change, uh, in a creature, which is uh, the rise of a novel protein and claiming, extrapolating that all the way to morphological change in this, in, in the bacteria, which it is absolutely not. And, and, and absolutely preposterous. That's like saying, 
if I drank something or got an immunity in my system, I've somehow evolved.